Welcome to part one of At Journey 365 mid-season break. I've got something else to say, people, where we provide commentary on subjects like abstaining does not mean desperation. Having a hard life makes you courageous. You don't have to sleep with everyone you meet. There is only one Holy Spirit. The value of a 50-50 relationship for those who identify as LGBTQ plus people and my old life after deliverance. I'm your host, Patrick A. Kelly. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight, and we are grateful for your continued support. Let's begin the show as we've always done by being grateful. As I've said before, this is a special mid-season episode, parts two and three of episode eight, Fear and Stubbornness and Struggling for My Life, which are detailed accounts of my sickness, struggles, and deliverance will resume on Sunday, December 17th. We will still release special episodes every week during our mid-season break on Sundays at 9 p.m. Our podcast is also moving to Sundays with brand new episodes released at 9 p.m. when the show resumes on December 17th. Now, if you've missed... Significant incidents of my life from episode one, the message where I reveal my dreams from God and begin the chronicle of my entire life or episode two, a tainted little soul where I give detailed accounts of my childhood molestation and episode three, a supernatural attack that almost killed me. Please visit any podcast platforms and enter the at sign J-R-N-Y-365 and listen when it's appropriate to do so. Yes, we are in our mid-season break, so we will change it up and touch on some things that have come up throughout the past few weeks. A dream from God. So, in episode one, the message, there were a series of different dreams and situations that God spoke to me about. One of the situations that I forgot to put in episode one, the message, which you all can go back and listen to because it has some detailed accounts of my life as well as messages and conversations uh, with God that you all would definitely want to hear. You don't want to miss that. One of the other things that God told me about God said that by early to mid-2026, a massive disruption in our lives will occur, especially in finance and governance. Systems will go into a state of redundancies and nothing will process. And those who attempt to avert this prophecy, their mind will also go into a state of uh, monotony and redundancy. For those of you who have money in the bank during that time or even just, you know, looking into the future from now till then, you all may want to start looking at, start looking into metals, precious metals and things like that, that you know have, it has value and will also keep its value. Okay. So that's just my two cents on that, y'all. So we are going to go into words of encouragement. If you've been molested, grew up in poverty, been disappointed and let down, been taken advantage of by those who should love and protect you, been mistreated, beaten and abused, been tortured mentally and physically, and have come out the other end with your mind, body, and soul intact, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It's an honor to meet you, such a brave soul. Always remember you are one of those chosen ones. God has placed a mark on your life to experience those things because your strength is above all. You are resilient. You are blessed and you are the epitome of grace and mercy. Stay steadfast and be of good courage. Through God's deliverance, the Holy Spirit will continue to guide you and you will see your entire world flourish as you help others. For those who have gone through hurt and pain and disappointment, sickness, hurt, trials and tribulations, and it has transformed you into less than who you are meant to be, there's still hope to be better. 
You might be walking with certain negative spirits and demons who are determined to keep you in a state of pity, a state of despair, a state of self-loathing. But God sees you. And at any moment, you can call on him and ask for deliverance and God will deliver you. Your life will change in ways that will be indescribable. Your days will be blessings upon blessings and your spiritual awakening will guide and protect all who hope and plan your demise. Abstaining does not mean desperation. Now, y'all, this is something that I've been dealing with since I began my life uh, towards celibacy, my journey towards abstinence, my life in celibacy and my life in abstinence. People think that just because I'm not having sex, like I'm desperate, I'm hard up and I'm at at, at will. You know, whenever they're ready, I'm just ready to lie down and, and do the deed. No, because I'm practicing abstinence, people. It does not mean I'm desperate or hard up and willing to lie down with anybody. When I see intelligent people trying to use my being abstinent as a play, it really disappoints me because it shows me how little understanding they have for what abstinence does for the mind, especially for the body. It also shows me that if they change who they are, they might have a chance of getting to know me on a deeper level, a spiritual level. Becoming celibate and abstaining does not mean I cannot find people to be with sexually. It means I am seeking a heightened consciousness and spirituality from the person I used to be. It also means that I want to become a better person and in doing so help others to become better people. So I'm going to tell you what abstaining and a life of celibacy did for me or is doing for me. I can choose smarter. Before, when I saw some somebody that I liked uh, or I wanted to become friends with someone or I wanted to be intimate with someone, it was just about looks. Oh, you have the look. You have the butt. You have the legs that I like. You got the face that I like. You got the personality that I like. Let's go. Now I can choose smarter. When I'm interested in someone, whether for a friendship, a partnership, or even being attracted to them, the Holy Spirit tells me now whether they align with me, uh, which means we have a spiritual connection. I've had scenarios where I saw someone I was attracted to, and when I would decide to seek consent from them, the Holy Spirit would tell me, no, they are not the one. We're not on the same path. It got to the point where I began feeling the different energies between those who aligned with me and those who did not. And let me tell you, it's way more people that do not align with me than align with me. OK, so and that can be, you know, a, sometimes discouraging because it's almost like it's you're looking for a needle in a haystack. When I allow the Holy Spirit to direct me, nothing goes wrong because it knows all. It knows you, who you are, what you have, what you're about. I save a lot of time in my professional and personal life. I don't get upset as quickly as I did before, nor do I deal with things people try to reflect onto me because they aren't at my level of consciousness or are dealing with sustained trauma. The road rage I used to have is gone. The Holy Spirit allows me and let me just go back to that road rage thing. People, when I tell you sometimes my road rage used to be up there. But once I got, went through my transcendency and I started doing this podcast and just started being relieved from all the built up trauma and hurt that I've had in my life. It just seemed like all of that stuff just melted away me cussing melted away now and i'm not saying that i'm perfect every once in a while a word here or there may slip and i have to ask god for forgiveness but i used to cuss like a sailor when i tell you my sister be like oh my goodness you know what i said my sister donna but now it's like 
a lot about me have changed for the better, and I'm so thankful. The Holy Spirit allows me to see things in people. However, lately when I speak to people saying hi or smiling or giving them positive vibes and words of encouragement, they often take it as I'm being sexually attracted to them or trying to hit on them. I've had women follow me around in the gym, bending over in front of me, staring me down or trying to get me to ask them out all because of a smile or a he or a hello. And I've had the same from guys, too. I mean, literally I'm talking about married guys, y'all walking around. You would never know that they're into guys and stuff like that. And I would I would see it on them. I would get the signal and stuff. I'm like, oh, no. Nah. I said, listen, I said, you know, how I think about marriage and stuff like that. And I have always thought about it like this. I'm going to be 100% honest. Like before, I would be like, yo, let's go. Now it's like I look at it as if when you were standing in front of, uh, you know, God and saying, God, yes, I want to take this person and I want to commit to them for better or worse. I want to honor and obey each other or what have you. Nowhere did it say, Lord, um, you know, this is my wife or this is my husband. And in, in our vows, I want to lay with it down with everybody that I come in contact with. You know what I'm saying? I want to have side pieces. I want to have an open relationship. I want to sleep. Uh, if I'm a man, I want to sleep with another man. I want to go on trips and do all these kind of things that doesn't agree with your partner. And then it leaves your partner in a state where they're worried about what's going on because they can see the things. They may not know everything that you're doing, but they can see it. And it's dishonest because if you go back and look at all the things that you have done to your spouse and say, well, hey, if my spouse did that to me, how how would I feel? I mean, come on, bro. This is like just straight hypocrisy. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, let's work on that, man. But like I said, the Holy Spirit allows me to see things in people. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I've been, I've always been a straight to the point guy for a long time. So I typically don't hold my breath when I need to say something. When I don't say anything, it means that the thing is not as serious to me or I'm giving it or giving you time to see where this is going. What I say is what I mean. And there aren't any double meaning or game plan. I do not need anyone to speak for me, think for me or not. I do not believe in someone being an exception to the rule. So when I, if I tell you that, hey, I'm not attracted to you in that way, or when I tell you that, hey, this is not what I'm about. I'm, I'm, I'm a friendly guy. I'm an outgoing guy. I just want to be around people and, and, and encourage people and us try to encourage other people and stuff like that. It doesn't mean it's a precursor because I'm trying to get in your draws, people. Let's come on now. You know what I'm saying? Work with me on that, man. Work with me on that, you know. And, you know, I do not need, like I said, I do not need anyone to speak for me or put words in my mouth. When I give you attention or when I give attention to someone, it does not mean uh, that person should consider themselves more than what they are experiencing right before their own eyes, right before my eyes. Creating fictitious scenarios will only lead to disappointment. Okay. I like you. Don't make things up. Okay, so wait. For someone to tell you that they like you, and if someone tells you that they like you, ask them why. Why do you like me? Why do you want me? Why me? Personally, after everything that you've heard about my life as Patrick A. Kelly and my deliverance as Patrick A. Kelly, why exactly are you interested in me? And are you ready to be the person that I've become? Specifically, are you a match for the person I've become since my deliverance? Once you've worked on yourself and God has delivered you and transformed your life, you can no longer accept just anything or just anyone. For you to consider bringing someone into your life after being delivered by God, whether for friendship, a long-term relationship, or a business partnership, they should score at least 80% on your evaluation scale. 
So I, I know y'all about to get up in arms right now, but let, let me let me expound on that sentiment, okay? 50% of anything means a person has many things they should work on and they must allow themselves the time and space to do so. So when someone says they want a 50-50 relationship, they ask for trouble. Often people ask for more than they deserve. If you are honest, you will ask for what you or who you think you are. This alone will create disaster because if you are at 50%, you have a lot of work to do on yourself. And so does the other person. So you should avoid bringing people into your life to add their mess and yours. This is unwise and considers insane and chaotic. This is why most of these relationships do not last. They turn very unhealthy and dangerous and people cheat going into the relationship and while in the relationship have multiple side situations, thus imploring the worst common denominators. You should not incorporate the woe is me dribble either. Playing the victim, which many often love to do, is overrated and will be unbecoming of the person most pretends to be a perfect, flawless, and less chaotic until people genuinely get to know who you are and they see otherwise. Okay, so let me get off the little soapbox a little bit. I'm, I'm going to, well, no, let me stay on the soapbox. I'm going to give you a, a little word of advice, okay? It's okay to get to know each other before sex or going into a relationship. If someone doesn't want to know who you are, but is ready to jump in bed with you, please pause that. Run. Okay? That's not a good recipe. You know what I'm saying? Stop putting up with other people's mess because you don't want to be alone. You all look good together or the sex is excellent is not a reason to accept abuse of any kind. Your time and relationship with God, self-esteem, self-worth, self-respect, and peace of mind are critical for the betterment of you, for a better life, for you having a better life. A good face and a nice body means nothing if a person is lacking internally. Receiving likes and props and gaining popularity may mean something other than you are a decent person. Money and material objects do not give you a pass on people having to subject to after effects of your trauma. Your chaos, destructive energies, negative spirits and dishonesty and you reflecting all those things onto others. You can do better. You must do better. None of these things should be a prerequisite for people to praise and worship you, let alone you doing wrong and demeaning things and getting away with them. Wanting and having the need to sleep with everybody you meet. Oh my goodness, bruh. This is something that I, I have incurred my entire life. And I've also been on the opposite end of it too. I've been the one, oh, I see this. Oh, I want this like a kid in the candy store. There is such a thing as having a good girlfriend who is your bestie or a good male friend who is your ace, your homie that you just gravitate to in an early part of y'all meeting. Don't mess things up because you lack self-control and respect for yourself, man. Come on now. I especially... I especially want to emphasize this in male on male and female on female relationships. I'm going to say this again. I especially want to emphasize this in male on male and female on female relationships. Whether you're hypersexually active or not, you are not meant to sleep with everyone you see. Self-respect and decency go a long way and could be a catalyst for something much more rewarding. Pretending like you are friends with someone only to try to land them in your bed is disgraceful. It's dishonest. It's belittling to yourself and creates negative energies that ultimately detract from your life. Sometimes we miss out on having great people in our lives because we are too short sighted to learn how to receive and appreciate those people. Let 
go of some of the selfishness and the man child and woman child attitudes and understand that when you are walking chaos, you shouldn't want to bring other people into your chaos. Work on yourself, become a better person and prepare to receive the people God has in store for those who identify as LGBTQ plus people. It is time that you throw out the victim card and walk in all of who you are. Someone who appreciates and loves the same sex. God loves you unconditionally and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. However, to gain favor and ascend to a higher level of consciousness, God wants you to quell the whoring. Let me say this again. To gain favor with God and ascend to a higher level of consciousness, God wants you to quell, stop the whoring, to stop the open relationships and other perversions some of us tend to sponsor. Come on, man. When you are in a loving and faithful relationship, God sees you no matter who the people are. You are in a blessed union when you and your partner can come to a level of consciousness where you charge each other with positive energies and do not discharge each other with negative energies. Okay? I'm telling you, your love life will be amazing if both of y'all are on the same spiritual level. When someone says to you, that you are going to hell because you love someone of the same sex, tell them God loves you. If only you change your ways, you could also be a light for others to change, to become better people. I'm taking back my power from you. Your inadequacies should not be at my expense and detriment to my future. Let me say that again. When someone says to you that you are going to hell because you love someone of the same sex, tell them God loves you. If you only change your ways, we're talking to them. If you only change your ways, you could also be a light for others to change, to become better people. I'm taking back my power from you. You no longer hold power over me and, to, and, and try to make me feel ashamed and inadequate because you are shameful and inadequate. Your inadequacies should not be at my expense and a detriment to my future. Your inadequacies and your negativity is not gonna, is not gonna change my future. I'm not gonna allow that, no. God says that to become a better person, you should start by working on one of your weaknesses and traumas and asking God for deliverance. God will give you that deliverance if you are sincere. You can't say, Lord, I want you to do something, but you're not sincere by your actions. You see what I'm saying? You can't say, oh God, I want you to change me. I want you to, do you to deliver me from this messed up relationship I'm in. But every time y'all break up, you keep going back to that, to all that mess. Come on now. We need to get, come on now. Once you get that deliverance, move on to the next thing uh, you must work on and do it all over again. And you will notice that your life will begin changing for the better. Blessings will flow. The Holy Spirit will convict you in your daily life to continuously improve. And you will want to help others to do the same. Okay. There's only one Holy Spirit. So I've had this banter back and forth with a gentleman that I went to college with. And he commented on when I said that God said that homosexuality is not wrong. He said homosexuality is wrong because it says it in the Bible. He gave me two, uh, two quotes of what it says and stuff like that. And he said because of his discernment and the Holy Spirit. So this is the reason why I'm, I'm making this comment that is there's only one Holy Spirit. Because what the Holy Spirit conveys to me doesn't align with what you were programmed to believe or want to think. It does not mean that my Holy Spirit is suddenly from an alternate universe. I'm here to tell you what God wants me to say to you. And that doesn't mean I'm shoving anything down your throat or attempting to put a spell on you. I live my life in practical ways that can at any time 
veer off into spiritual and supernatural. I've never been the type of person who lets others think for me. I use my common sense, dreams and premonitions from God, conviction by the Holy Spirit, and sound old logic to make determinations in my life. Now, if you're telling me something that you just regurgitate from somebody else, and then that comes from somebody else, and that comes from somebody else, what they tell you that? You know, somebody says one thing, and by the time they get to the, the 15th person, it hasn't changed how many times? So all I'm asking people is that you guys seek your own answers through God, your own understanding, because when you're regurgitating these things and when it re information comes out that all these things that you have learned is wrong, you have spent your entire life learning all these wrong things and treating people these different types of ways because of your, your let's say, misjudgment, then, you know, you're going to be like, oh, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? So let's discover an understanding through God by by building a stronger spiritual connection with God and with the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, you know, it, it, it takes practice to know whether or not it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you or whether it's something else uh, or whether it's something inner that you have developed and you have nurtured throughout the years. Or it also could be conviction, too. You know what I'm saying? So, people, let's work on that. And, you know, I love my boy. I'm going to call him R. I love my boy R. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope you're still with me on the podcast. If you're gone, my apologies to you um, that you're going to be missing out on a lot of things that, that God is going to say to me that I'm going to say to you guys and stuff like that. And hopefully, and I pray that God, you know, uh, uh, and the Holy Spirit work on you to open up your mind to being receptive of things other than what you were programmed for. OK, I have always searched and have been inquisitive since I was a baby about the inner workings of life itself, where uh, we as people of color came from and why we were deemed unworthy in contrast to any other race on this planet to sustain all the detriment and destruction that have come upon us. Let me say that again. I have always searched and have been inquisitive since I was a baby about the workings of life itself, where we as people of color came from and why we were deemed unworthy in contrast to any other race on this planet to sustain all the detriment and destruction that have come upon us. OK, I'm just I'm be I'm, I'm going to say it. Whether people want me to say it or not, we are God's chosen people. We are God's chosen people, uh, the Israelites. God told me this. And if you want to hear about it, go listen to uh, episode one, The Message, where I talked about, you know, how our land was stolen and how God is going to restore all that back to us and all those people who had a hand. I don't care if it's a little hand. I don't care if it's a little bit of sin that you've done to us. They, what they say, there's no such thing as a little sin or a big sin. Sin is sin. Whatever you guys did to us, God is going to reap that on you. So start uh, making amends now and, you know, putting us, you know, create mulatto babies and giving us, a, a, you know, a little crumbs off your table in, in, in movies and in commercials and, and all these other little things now that you're trying to do. And then also lying and trying to hide our history and stuff like that. That is not going to help you. OK, because God sees and knows all and retribution is way nearer than you think. OK, so my purpose in this podcast is to help you open your mind, allow and promote consciousness and necessary thinking and gain a spiritual connection with God to walk in your glory, in your purpose. My old life after deliverance. When God delivers you from your past life, it doesn't mean your past life is washed away and doesn't exist anymore. It also doesn't tell you that you suddenly become perfect. Food for thought, people. Season one of this podcast chronicles my life 
and what made me who I am today. There are good, bad, and ugly things, and those things make up my experiences. So if you are offended by anything in any of these episodes, I apologize to you. But I say this, my life wasn't perfect before, and it won't be perfect as I continue on my journey. But I can promise you that each and every day I will strive to become a better person person than who I was the day before. Let me say that again. Season one of this podcast chronicles my life and what made me who I am today. There are good, bad, and ugly things, and those things make up my entire experiences. So if you are offended by anything in any of these podcast episodes, I apologize to you now. But I say this, my life wasn't perfect before and it won't be perfect as I continue on my journey. But I can promise you that each and every day I will strive to become a better person than who I was the day before. Now, God charged me to be the vessel, to be the message, to help our people know who they are. And it starts with you knowing who I am. This is a special mid-season episode of the Spiritual Podcast at Journey 365. And I'm your host, Patrick A. Kelly. Part two and part three of episode eight, Fear and Stubbornness and Struggling from My Life, will resume on Sunday, December 17th at 9 p.m. We will continue to release special episodes every Sunday at 9 p.m. during our mid-season break. Our podcast is also moving to Sundays with brand new episodes released at 9 p.m. when the show resumes December 17th. Thank you again for your continued support and join us next Sunday for another special episode during our mid-season break. Good night.